I recently spent some time in Borrega in Tanzania, one of the most beautiful places in the world, and it's being decimated by climate change. Seeing firsthand the erratic rains, droughts and crops failing, I knew that we as the church had a much bigger part to play in caring for creation. Jesus speaks into this in Luke 10, when he teaches through the parable of the Good Samaritan, love your neighbor. I believe this speaks into our neighbors locally, globally, and even those in future generations. We have a responsibility to play our part in God's wider story of stewarding and redeeming creation. The Church of England has a roadmap to net zero carbon by 2030. This is wonderful, but it's only the beginning. I'm convinced that even though we're working towards net zero, the biggest effect that we as a church will make in caring for creation is in our lifestyles, how we live our day-to-day -day lives. As a diocese, we're using the Arosha scheme. This provides access to online assessments to help you understand what steps your church can take towards net zero carbon. You'll receive a score and improvements will lead on to prestigious bronze, silver or gold Eco Church Awards. I went online and looked at what was required for it and presented it to my church wardens meeting. We discovered as we went through that many of the things we were actually already doing. I found the process very easy. It was very straightforward. It was encouraging to see that we'd already been doing some of that work, I think, when we came to look at the Arocha scheme. Some churches think, well, we can't do anything because it'll cost too much. But most churches find there are some significant improvements that you can make that don't cost any money at all. Following that questionnaire, we knew some of the things that we could follow up with, bird boxes and bug hotels, and also managing the grounds around the church. For me, when there was talk of working towards the award and looking at the community garden, it was trying to look at how we can link all of these things together to support our community cafe. We have got a wild garden. We have a community garden with apples there. We do composting, we do recycling, and we try to be as economical and eco-friendly as we possibly can. Obviously we're in a, a big building here and it, it doesn't benefit from insulation, but there were things that we could do. We have a colony of bees in the wall of the church. These have been here that we know of for a hundred years. For the floral decorations we have in the church, we like to source it locally or raid our own gardens for it. Part of the Arocha scheme involves foregrounding ecological issues and care of creation in worship and we've been able to do that at St Paul's by accessing some online resources. What I'd suggest is to start small and let it grow. Just choose three things to start off with. Firstly, something practical. My church did the Arocha self-assessment. Secondly, something spiritual, such as an environmental Bible study course. Thirdly, something that reaches out to the community around you. For me personally, I love the idea of educating my children about looking after our world, looking after what we have. If people are going to sign up to it, they don't need to be scared about the fact that it's going to take too much of their time. It's not as arduous and not as difficult as you imagine it might be. I would suggest do what you can, not what you can't. The Arocha scheme is such a wide scheme across various different aspects of church life. There will be something each church can do. To be able to bring some of these things back, it's, you know, it has to be good for the planet and good for everyone, really. Some will remember my grandson, Thomas. And that's why there is a cherry tree planted at the top of our drive in memory of him and he would want me to do this.